On a dark Texas night, Patty checks in on her trap. Here along the U.S.-Mexico border, she's looking for kissing bugs, blood-sucking insects that transmit Chagas disease. Her bait? Ultraviolet light and a vapor of dry ice. The ice, the dry ice, make the carbon dioxide that we need to attract the bugs. It's carbon dioxide that the bug uses to find its prey, remember, tracking the exhalations of rats, the, dogs, and people, small. then hiding out where they live, usually in poverty-stricken areas. Conditions for the house is usually not electricity, no good drainage, and the, the doors are open, and there are some holes in the houses where they can go, or if you have dogs, and the dog has a house, then those are good conditions for them. Tonight, no kissing bug, only a surprised rhinoceros beetle. Patty has better luck in her laboratory. A student has brought in a specimen, and it's alive. It was actually next to a, uh, where a dog actually lives. Okay. The insect earned the moniker kissing bug because it infects with a kiss. So come close to your mouth, kiss you, or get your blood, you don't feel it. And then they have to poo. In the feces is when parasite comes. So next morning you scratch and the parasite goes into your system. The parasite can cause organs like the intestines or the heart to expand until they burst. More than 20,000 people die from it each year. It's a well-known disease in Latin America, but scientist Peter Hotez says the people most affected have few means to attract public attention or research dollars. This is a forgotten disease among forgotten people. This is a disease that exclusively affects people living in severe poverty and generally uh, uh, minority populations, indigenous populations, people of color, people who have no voice. In Texas, where one out of five people lives below the poverty line, more than 200,000 people are believed to be infected. Patty says she expects infections to spread as climate change brings kissing bugs further north.